The Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verses 30 through 34 and 53 through 56. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd and he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to the land at Genesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about the whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to whatever they heard, to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak and all who touched it were healed. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. Let us pray. Healer of even those who we don't think deserve healing, those that are detestable in our eyes, but they are beloved in your eyes. Clear our minds from those thoughts and bring to us a sense of hospitality that will make a home for everyone who is lost, searching, and is found. Speak through me and in spite of me. Might these words be holy, living, and touch a heart to do the work that you call us to do. Amen. Has there ever been a time when you had to remind yourself to slow down or to possibly stop and smell the roses? The gift of pausing and observing without having to think about what comes next, what needs to be done, can be one of the greatest joys in life. Clearing our mind of all that distracts, that worries, and that bothers us can be one of the best ways we can share in the comforting grace of God and that we can care for ourselves mentally. Another wonderful way to care for ourselves is Sabbath. Sabbath is a period of rest. Friends, we need rest. We need rest. Keeping a Sabbath day is crucial to your spiritual, mental, and physical health. One of the creation stories in Genesis shares that on the seventh day, God rested. Jesus led his disciples to rest in a deserted place. Rest can happen in many ways. But one thing to remember is to not forget the importance of the Sabbath. It is so easy to get caught up on the week's things that need to be done with work, 
with school, with other activities that we don't find time to rest. You know, the Sabbath is just as important as the work that is done on the other days of the week. It helps to refocus, re-energize, enliven, and gives us even more inspiration. That might not really make sense as to why taking time to rest would inspire, but friends, I have been there. And as much as I love pastoring and pastoral care, self-care in the form of Sabbath provides grace upon grace upon grace to yourself. And it is what we are called to do. You know, um, one of the joys this past week was watching um, Sonic the Hedgehog movie. How many of you have seen that movie? No, it's on Paramount Plus. Okay. The, the, this movie had a lot to share about being from another place, being alone, and of course, being energetic and running in circles, because I'm sure many of you have played Sonic before, with all that energy. In this movie, Sonic lives secretly in a small town, unable to be seen by humans because he's worried that he'll have to go to another place, if not, if he is seen. He's not of the earth, so it makes things even more difficult. One day he gets really excited and causes a huge energy blackout. This unexpected event causes him to be on the government's radar. Now I share this because even with Sonic's unlimited energy, rest was necessary. There are many moments of humor and action in that movie, but some of the most precious moments are when Sonic has to go to sleep, has to take time to slow down. Because everyone needs a Sabbath. Jesus in this passage from the Gospel of Mark leads the disciples to a deserted place. Sabbath does not mean that we cannot go anywhere but because of the popularity of the miracles of Jesus and his disciples and everyone knowing him, he found it important to find rest in a deserted place. Sometimes doing nothing can be the best thing you can do. That might surprise you, but it is more true than we would think. The act of doing nothing really does something for energizing your body. Just because we have a time of Sabbath does not mean our entire life should be resting. What comes after Sabbath is responding to the call. We have to listen for God's call. And we must respond in God's time. One of the amazing ways that this community of faith has responded to a drastic need, an urgent need, is through the Dobbs Ferry canned food collection. Your dedication and support to this amazing effort for those in need of physical nutrition is astounding. I pray that we might find other ways to share and continue to share our light into the world. Finding ways to use your own voice is important. 
you know, in preaching class, they shared with us that only you can preach the way you preach. Now, Sean, I'm sure that you have a situation with basketball where only you can dribble the way you dribble. Now, I share that with you today because only you can do that amazing thing that you are called to do the way that you are called to do it. Only you can use that spectacular gift or many gifts to bring heaven to earth and to shine a light into the deepest and darkest areas of the world. The disciples used their many gifts just as Jesus used his to bring healing and comfort to those who needed it. Those who rushed to touch the cloak. Those who were hemorrhaging for so long and needed immediate healing. Even after they rested, they went into the town and healed, brought hope and helped others. They didn't try to come up with excuses of why they couldn't do it, but they used their God-given gifts to impact the world, almost like that impact that happened when Sonic calls the power blackout. You know, this church, this community of faith, this beautiful community, is small. I share this with you because small churches do not mean that you do small ministry. Some of the greatest and most fulfilling ministry is done in the small church. I hope that you are encouraged by this realization and reality because I have continued to be encouraged as I have begun here as your pastor, as to what the future holds for this community of faith. I am encouraged as we commit to supporting this church with our time, our talents, and our treasure. I am encouraged because I know, I believe that God's grace and abundance shall rain down in due time. God is planting seeds through the faithful, spirit-filled, and spirit-driven people of this community of faith. Now, when we plant seeds, amazing things can happen. We cannot lose hope and cannot think that our size isn't enough because friends, you're here for a purpose, and you're here because God has sent each of you here to do amazing work, to do unique work that no other place and no other people can do because of your own unique gifts and your own unique ability. This church is small, but has a mighty love for this community and the world. That is evident through your history as a church and through the missions that you share financially in with so much helpful and spiritual and physical generosity. That is evident to the commitment of sharing to the world about Jesus. That is evident in your commitment to learning more about the Bible, learning more about each other, and sharing your light to this community and beyond. You know, John Wesley shared this about holiness. While thou seekest God in all things, thou shalt find him in all. 
the fountain of all holiness, continually filling thee with his own likeness, with justice, mercy, and truth. Might you be filled with God's likeness of justice, mercy, and truth as we seek to continue to be a small church with a gigantic heart filled with love, comfort, and peace. Amen. Please pray with me. God, we give you thanks for all of those amazing, amazing things and missions and ministries that have been shared in through the history of this community of faith. I pray that you might pour your spirit upon all of the people gathered here today and those that are not present with us. We pray that you would be with them, that you would inspire in their hearts a fire that would never burn out, that would never go out, so that they can shine that light, that spirit, and that love to this community and to the world. Amen.